Hello, this is Lauren and we're live at the Reggae Jam in Bersenbrook, Germany. And with us we have Marcia Griffiths. Marcia Griffiths, it's an honor and thank you for affording us the opportunity to interview you. How are you and after your show? I am truly blessed and I am thankful to Almighty God for preserving me that I can be sitting here with you today in the 21st century. Still communicating through the medium of music, I am truly thankful. It's 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 wonderful. It's really wonderful having having to experience what I am right now. Marsha, my first question to you, being a legend in terms of the genre of music in reggae, how do you feel about it? And uh, who do you think would be fulfilling your footsteps in future? I, it is hard to say because, first of all, I'd like to tell you that I am thankful and I can pat myself on the shoulder to know that throughout the years on my journey through the music, I have inspired all these women. And it's such a blessing for me to sit and hear all these young singers and within no, with no exception, because even Sister Judy would speak in interviews that I was her inspiration, Judy Mowat. And all these young singers, they would tell you in their interviews that I was their inspiration and their role model. And the business was totally male dominated. No, it's not. And I'm thankful that I made that contribution to change that around, to have inspired all these female singers. Yes. We can say big up to the best female reggae artist to date. Marsha, what is your, 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 your take on, on the dance hall culture to date in, in terms of female dance hall artists and the way that they express themselves? Well, as long as they are not expressing themselves in any negative way and they are not sending anything negative out there because the music is all about teaching educating and uplifting and if you are not doing that in the music then you are not chosen you are not called and a lot of us do not realize the position that we have in this life in the music that we are in a position to communicate to the world and we can teach unite the world through music because music is a powerful weapon and you know a lot of us is using it in the wrong way and we know that we know that satan was a bright musician and sometimes i think he controls some of the uh, you know some of us so as long as especially the women in the dance hall feel as long as they are doing something positive especially for the children, this generation that needs a lot of guidance is the music that they are depending on. Because as soon as the song is released, the baby knows it and they can sing it. I sometimes think that they should put the lessons in music because they grab onto the music so far. So I, I don't have a problem as long as they are sending positive message. Oh, yeah, well, that's that's the message that every young person should be getting something positive exactly. to in terms of upliftment for them to have a brighter future in their lives what is your m most memorable moment in terms of your career what would you say was that point where you sit back and say this was the best time <laughs> in my life easy that's a hard one because they are not i mean to have journeyed for 50 years it's not easy to have one moment you know I've had a few moments that I can never forget you know and it's not easy to just pinpoint one one of them I'll never forget is being pregnant on stage performing with Bob as a member of the I3 and I was, I just finished doing Lively Up Yourself, which was a hectic song, and I was dancing up a storm. Wow. <laughs> and at the end of the song, 
I remember No Man of Christ started right after that. And Bob put his guitar down on the stand. And immediately after that, I just saw some little things dangling before my eyes. And I felt my stomach just stiffen out on me and I knew I was going to faint. I was about to collapse. And I held on to Rita's dress and I said, Rita, I'm going to fall. And believe me, for me telling you now, it's two different things. Before I could fall, I felt an arm around my shoulder. And when I looked, it was Bob. He, it is not that he rushed or he saw something happening. The song was playing, No Man of Christ started, and he just slowly walked over to where I was standing and just put his arm around me before he, I was about to fall. And he walked me away to center stage. And he was just, with a microphone, he was doing, doing ad-libs about mothers and children all over the world. It was, I can't tell you, I was instantly rejuvenated. Must have been, I, I, you know, it gives me chills. I'm getting goosebumps all over my skin. I mean, I couldn't wait to ask him how he came to, you know, to do that. It was just an instinct. His eyes is always closed when he's performing. So it was just a, the spirit just led him to me. <laughs> so that's one special moment that I can't forget. They say memories never die and they always live with you. So in terms of Africa and Jamaica, what I'd like to know from you is what, what impact does the, the struggle in Africa have on Jamaica? How does Africa's struggle affect Jamaica in this day and age? Well, it affects us everywhere because we are one people. We feel the same plain pain. We are one blood, one family, you know, one people. And we are experiencing this, a similar situation in Jamaica. And we always sing about Africa and try to defend everything about Africa because we know we are originated from Africa. You know, so it affects us in every way. And I, we will just continue to do what we can to support and strengthen you know, Africa is Mama Africa in all ways. That's beautiful. My next question to you is, what would your message be to all those young ladies out there who have just lost hope in every single way, thinking that there's no way forward in life, you know, and to the youth? Because I think in this day and age, they're really struggling times for our, our youth in Africa and around the world, but particularly to us African females, young girls, women, and people who have just lost hope, what would be a way for them to, a positive way of, for them to be thinking right now? Oh, can you lose hope when you have life? There's no way you can lose hope and not have faith when there's life, because when there's life, there's hope. And as long as you have life, there must be hope and faith. And you know, at the end of every dark cloud, there's always a sunshine. And I think a lot of us need to read our Bibles. That would give us a lot of hope and a lot of faith. And a lot of the young sisters in, you know, in, in Africa and everywhere that has lost hope, I think they, 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 they need guidance. To know that God live it and it cannot can never be too bad that the sun it takes rain and sunshine to make a rainbow and it can never be too bad you never can tell what the next minute can bring so there's no way you can lose hope the next minute no is the greatest thing on earth if we all knew what was going to be happening the next moment we would avoid it or you know so there's no way we can lose hope and faith. And if we know God, there's no way we can not have hope and faith. And we have life. God gives us life, which is the greatest thing we could ever ask for. You know, so they're on a different track. You know, life is the greatest thing. Man, listen, man, there's so many opportunities out there for us. 
as long as we just have hope and faith and we focus on the things that we would love to do. Yes, very much true. That is life and we need to live it out. Our thoughts alone can manifest that. Anything you think of, you're able to yes. structure and build into yes. your life and, and achieve and move forward. Masha, I'd like to know, what are your future projects? Is there anything that you have coming up in terms of um, work that you're doing in the music industry? Well, next year I'm celebrating 50 years in the business and sky will be the limit for me because as long as God preserves me that I can see that moment, I am definitely, we have a lot of great, great plans. Nothing that the world has ever seen. Yes, because so. we're going to be doing, presenting shows in Hawaii, Jamaica, different parts. And the shows are going to be done in decades. From the first decade that I start, with the band I started with, and with the singers that I performed with in that decade, going to the 70s, and there's the same thing right up until now. That's amazing. It's yes. something that I'd love to join and actually see for myself. Um, I'd just like to thank you very much for this opportunity. We at African Life wish you all the best. We wish you good health. We wish you a great tour. You know, let your journey be blessed. Yes. And well, I'm I just I'm, I'm just blown away by the fact that I've had this opportunity to be seated right next yes. to the great Marsha Griffith, and I think only one in a very few in South Africa and in Africa could say that they've had this experience. Guys, it's been amazing speaking to Marsha Griffith. Once again, thank you very much and all thank the best. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to communicate to my people. You know, so I just want to send love and blessings to everyone out there. It's perfect love. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you. And we're out from African life. Bye.